Electrical impedance is the measure of the opposition that a circuit presents to a current when a voltage is applied. In quantitative terms, it is the complex ratio of the voltage to the current in an alternating current circuit. Impedance extends the concept of resistance to AC circuits, and possesses both magnitude and phase, unlike resistance, which has only magnitude. When a circuit is driven with direct current, there is no distinction between impedance and resistance, the latter can be thought of as impedance with zero phase angle. It is necessary to introduce the concept of impedance in AC circuits because there are two additional impeding mechanisms to be taken into account. Besides the normal resistance of DC circuits, the induction of voltages in conductors self-induced by the magnetic fields of currents and the electrostatic storage of charge induced by voltages between conductors. The impedance caused by these two effects is collectively referred to as reactance and forms the imaginary part of complex impedance whereas resistance forms the real part. The symbol for impedance is usually Z and it may be represented by writing its magnitude and phase in the form Z theta. However, Cartesian complex number representation is often more powerful for circuit analysis purposes. The term impedance was coined by Oliver Heaviside in July 1886. Arthur Kennelly was the first to represent impedance with complex numbers in 1893. Impedance is defined as the frequency domain ratio of the voltage to the current. In other words, it is the voltage-current ratio for a single complex exponential at a particular frequency omega. In general, impedance will be a complex number, with the same units as resistance, for which the SI unit is the ohm. For a sinusoidal current or voltage input, the polar form of the complex impedance relates the amplitude and phase of the voltage and current. In particular, the magnitude of the complex impedance is the ratio of the voltage amplitude to the current amplitude. The phase of the complex impedance is the phase shift by which the current lags the voltage. The reciprocal of impedance is admittance. Complex impedance. Impedance is represented as a complex quantity and the term complex impedance may be used interchangeably. The polar form conveniently captures both magnitude and phase characteristics as where the magnitude represents the ratio of the voltage difference, amplitude to the current amplitude, while the argument gives the phase difference between voltage and current, is the imaginary unit, and is used instead of in this context to avoid confusion with the symbol for electric current. In Cartesian form, impedance is defined as where the real part of impedance is the resistance and the imaginary part is the reactance, where it is needed to add or subtract impedances. The Cartesian form is more convenient, but when quantities are multiplied or divided, the calculation becomes simpler if the polar form is used. A circuit calculation, such as finding the total impedance of two impedances in parallel, may require conversion between forms several times during the calculation. Conversion between the forms follows the normal conversion rules of complex numbers. Ohm's law. The meaning of electrical impedance can be understood by substituting it into Ohm's law. The magnitude of the impedance acts just like resistance, giving the drop in voltage amplitude across an impedance for a given current. The phase factor tells us that the current lags the voltage by a phase of, just as impedance extends Ohm's law to cover AC circuits. Other results from DC circuit analysis, such as voltage division, current division, Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem, can also be extended to AC circuits by replacing resistance with impedance. Complex voltage and current. Impedance is defined as the ratio of these quantities. Substituting these into Ohm's law, we have noting that this must hold for all. We may equate the magnitudes and phases to obtain the magnitude equation is the familiar Ohm's law applied to the voltage and current amplitudes. While the second equation defines the phase relationship, validity of complex representation This representation using complex exponentials may be justified by noting that 
The real valued sinusoidal function representing either voltage or current may be broken into two complex valued functions. By the principle of superposition, we may analyze the behavior of the sinusoid on the left-hand side by analyzing the behavior of the two complex terms on the right-hand side. Given the symmetry, we only need to perform the analysis for one right-hand term, the results will be identical for the other. At the end of any calculation, we may return to real-valued sinusoids by further noting that phase is a phase or is a constant complex number, usually expressed in exponential form, representing the complex amplitude of a sinusoidal function of time. Phases are used by electrical engineers to simplify computations involving sinusoids, where they can often reduce a differential equation problem to an algebraic one. The impedance of a circuit element can be defined as the ratio of the phasor voltage across the element to the phasor current through the element, as determined by the relative amplitudes and phases of the voltage and current. This is identical to the definition from Ohm's law given above, recognizing that the factors of cancel. Device examples. The impedance of an ideal resistor is purely real and is referred to as a resistive impedance. In this case, the voltage and current waveforms are proportional and in phase. Ideal inductors and capacitors have a purely imaginary reactive impedance. The impedance of inductors increases as frequency increases, the impedance of capacitors decreases as frequency increases, in both cases. For an applied sinusoidal voltage, the resulting current is also sinusoidal, but in quadrature, 90 degrees out of phase with the voltage. However, the phases have opposite signs. In an inductor, the current is lagging, in a capacitor the current is leading. Note the following are identities for the imaginary unit, and its reciprocal. Thus the inductor and capacitor impedance equations can be rewritten in polar form. The magnitude gives the change in voltage amplitude for a given current amplitude through the impedance while the exponential factors give the phase relationship. Deriving the device-specific impedances what follows below is a derivation of impedance for each of the three basic circuit elements, the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor. Although the idea can be extended to define the relationship between the voltage and current of any arbitrary signal, these derivations will assume sinusoidal signals, since any arbitrary signal can be approximated as a sum of sinusoids through Fourier analysis. Resistor for a resistor, there is the relation which is Ohm's law. Considering the voltage signal to be it follows that this says that the ratio of AC voltage amplitude to alternating current amplitude across a resistor is, and that the AC voltage leads the current across a resistor by zero degrees. This result is commonly expressed as capacitor for a capacitor, there is the relation. Considering the voltage signal to be it follows that and thus this says that the ratio of AC voltage amplitude to AC current amplitude across a capacitor is, and that the AC voltage lags the AC current across a capacitor by 90 degrees. This result is commonly expressed in polar form as or, by applying Euler's formula as inductor for the inductor, we have the relation. This time, considering the current signal to be, it follows that, and thus, this says that the ratio of AC voltage amplitude to AC current amplitude across an inductor is, and that the AC voltage leads the AC current across an inductor by 90 degrees. This result is commonly expressed in polar form as or, using Euler's formula as generalized S-plane impedance. Impedance defined in terms of J omega can strictly be applied only to circuits that are driven with a steady state AC signal. The concept of impedance can be extended to a circuit energized with any arbitrary signal by using complex frequency instead of J omega. Complex frequency is given a symbol S and is, in general, a complex number. Signals are expressed in terms of complex frequency by taking the Laplace transform of the time domain expression of the signal. The impedance of the basic circuit elements in this more general notation is as follows. 
For a DC circuit this simplifies to S equals 0. For a steady state sinusoidal AC signal S equals J omega. Resistance versus reactance. Resistance and reactance together determine the magnitude and phase of the impedance through the following relations. In many applications, the relative phase of the voltage and current is not critical so only the magnitude of the impedance is significant. Resistance Resistance is the real part of impedance. A device with a purely resistive impedance exhibits no phase shift between the voltage and current. Reactance Reactance is the imaginary part of the impedance. A component with a finite reactance induces a phase shift between the voltage across it and the current through it. A purely reactive component is distinguished by the sinusoidal voltage across the component being in quadrature with the sinusoidal current through the component. This implies that the component alternately absorbs energy from the circuit and then returns energy to the circuit. A pure reactance will not dissipate any power. Capacitive reactance A capacitor has a purely reactive impedance which is inversely proportional to the signal frequency. A capacitor consists of two conductors separated by an insulator, also known as a dielectric. At low frequencies, a capacitor is an open circuit so no charge flows in the dielectric. A DC voltage applied across a capacitor causes charge to accumulate on one side. The electric field due to the accumulated charge is the source of the opposition to the current. When the potential associated with the charge exactly balances the applied voltage, the current goes to zero. Driven by an AC supply, a capacitor will only accumulate a limited amount of charge before the potential difference changes sign and the charge dissipates. The higher the frequency, the less charge will accumulate and the smaller the opposition to the current. Inductive reactance Inductive reactance is proportional to the signal frequency and the inductance. An inductor consists of a coiled conductor. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction gives the back EMF due to a rate of change of magnetic flux density through a current loop. For an inductor consisting of a coil with loops this gives. The back EMF is the source of the opposition to current flow. A constant direct current has a zero rate of change and sees an inductor as a short circuit. An alternating current has a time averaged rate of change that is proportional to frequency. This causes the increase in inductive reactance with frequency. Total reactance The total reactance is given by so that the total impedance is combining impedances. The total impedance of many simple networks of components can be calculated using the rules for combining impedances in series and parallel. The rules are identical to those used for combining resistances, except that the numbers in general will be complex numbers. In the general case, however, equivalent impedance transforms in addition to series and parallel will be required. Series combination for components connected in series. The current through each circuit element is the same. The total impedance is the sum of the component impedances, or explicitly in real and imaginary terms. Parallel combination for components connected in parallel. The voltage across each circuit element is the same. The ratio of currents through any two elements is the inverse ratio of their impedances. Hence the inverse total impedance is the sum of the inverses of the component impedances, or, when n equals 2, the equivalent impedance can be calculated in terms of the equivalent series resistance and reactance. Measurement The measurement of the impedance of devices and transmission lines is a practical problem in radio technology and other fields. Measurements of impedance may be carried out at one frequency, or the variation of device impedance over a range of frequencies may be of interest. The impedance may be measured or displayed directly in ohms, or other values related to impedance may be displayed, for example, in a radio antenna. The standing wave ratio or reflection coefficient may be more useful than the impedance alone. The measurement of impedance requires the measurement of the magnitude of voltage and current, and the phase difference between them. Impedance is often measured by bridge methods. 
Similar to the direct current Wheatstone bridge, a calibrated reference impedance is adjusted to balance off the effect of the impedance of the device under test. Impedance measurement in power electronic devices may require simultaneous measurement and provision of power to the operating device. The impedance of a device can be calculated by complex division of the voltage and current. The impedance of the device can be calculated by applying a sinusoidal voltage to the device in series with a resistor, and measuring the voltage across the resistor and across the device. Performing this measurement by sweeping the frequencies of the applied signal provides the impedance phase and magnitude. The use of an impulse response may be used in combination with the fast Fourier transform to rapidly measure the electrical impedance of various electrical devices. The LCR meter, capacitance, and resistance is a device commonly used to measure the inductance resistance and capacitance of a component. From these values, the impedance at any frequency can be calculated. Variable impedance. In general, neither impedance nor admittance can be time-varying as they are defined for complex exponentials for infinity less than t less than plus infinity. If the complex exponential voltage current ratio changes over time or amplitude, the circuit element cannot be described using the frequency domain. However, many systems may exhibit nonlinear or time-varying voltage current ratios that appear to be linear time invariant for small signals over small observation windows. Hence, they can be roughly described as having a time-varying impedance. That is, this description is an approximation over large signal swings or observation windows. The voltage current relationship is non-LTI and cannot be described by impedance.